Today I want to talk to you about rabies and rabies vaccine. Let's begin. What is rabies? Rabies belong to the Rhabdoviridae family and specifically the Lysavirus genus. It has a distinct bullet shape and is classified as a single-stranded negative RNA virus. It is called a RNA virus because its genetic material is made up of ribonucleic acid which exists in a single strand. It is called a negative RNA virus because it cannot replicate competent rabies virus without the help of messenger RNA. How does the rabies virus cause infection? The rabies virus envelope or the membrane attaches itself to the host cell membrane and penetrates into the cytoplasm. Once in the cytoplasm, it uses messenger RNA to replicate rabies viruses. Rabies virus is transmitted through direct contact, such as through broken skin or mucous membrane in the eyes, nose, or mouth, or it may be transmitted with saliva or through brain or the nervous system tissue from an infected animal. People usually get rabies from the bite of a rabid animal. It is also possible, but rare, for people to get rabies from a non-bite exposure, which can include scratches, abrasions, or open wounds that are exposed to saliva or other potentially infectious material from a rabid animal. Rabies kills about 60,000 people annually, mostly in Africa and Asia. The disease can take months to develop following a person's contact with a rabid animal. Which animals are most likely to carry the rabies virus? In an order of descent, you have bats are the most common, then raccoons, the second most common, skunks, the third most common, foxes, fourth most common, cats, fifth most common, cattle, sixth most common, and dogs, seventh most common. Here are some facts about some of these rabies carriers. Bats are one of the most commonly reported rabid animal in the United States. They are also the leading cause of rabies death. It is advisable that if a person come in contact with a bat, they should receive the rabies vaccine. Once a bat is in the same enclosed space with you, the vaccine should be considered. Any bat that is active by day or is found in a place where bats are not usually seen, such as an inside a building or your home, should be considered to be sick. A bat that does not fly well or is easily approached is likely ill. Raccoon is the second most common carrier of rabies. The signs of rabies in raccoon include erratic movement, unusual sounds, drooling, and foaming from the mouth, and eventual paralysis. Rabies is one of the most devastating viral diseases affecting mammals, including dogs and humans. It is a fatal disease caused by infection with the rabies virus. Rabies virus is found throughout the world, including North America, Central and South America, Asia, Africa, the Middle East, and some parts of Europe. However, there are many areas in the world that are rabies-free, including Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Ireland, Iceland, the United Kingdom, certain Pacific Islands, Antarctica, and parts of Scandinavia. What are the signs and symptoms of rabies? After a rabies exposure, the rabies virus has to travel to the brain before it can cause symptoms. 
This time between exposure and appearance of symptoms is the incubation period. It may last for weeks to months. The incubation period may vary based on the location of the exposure site, that is how far away it is from the brain, and the type of rabies virus and any existing immunity. The first symptoms of rabies may be similar to the flu, including weakness or discomfort, fever or headache. There also may be discomfort, pricking or an itching sensation at the site of the bite. These symptoms may last for days. Symptoms then progress to cerebral dysfunction, anxiety, confusion, and agitation. As the disease progresses, the person may experience delirium, abnormal behavior, hallucinations, hydrophobia, which is fear of water, and insomnia. The acute period of disease typically ends after two to 10 days. Once clinical signs of rabies appear, the disease is nearly always fatal and treatment is typically supportive. Less than 20 cases of human survival from clinical rabies have been reported. Diagnosis in animals. How is it diagnosed? particularly in animals. A diagnosis of rabies can be made after detection of rabies virus from any part of the affected brain, but in order to rule out rabies, the test must include tissue from at least two locations in the brain, preferably the brain stem and the cerebellum. The tests require that the animal be euthanized. The test itself takes about two hours but it takes time to remove the brain samples from an animal suspected of having rabies and to ship these samples to a state public health or veterinarian diagnostic laboratory for diagnosis. Diagnosis in humans. How is it diagnosed in humans? Several tests are necessary to diagnose rabies, anti-mortem, that's before death, in humans. No single test is sufficient. Tests are performed on samples of saliva, serum, spinal fluid, and the skin biopsies of hair follicles at the nape of the neck. Saliva can be tested by virus isolation or reverse transcription followed by polymerase chain reaction. Serum and spinal fluid are tested for antibodies to rabies virus. Skin biopsy Specimens are examined for rabies antigen in the cutaneous nerves at the base of the hair follicles. How is rabies treated? According to the CDC, post-exposure prophylaxis consists of a dose of human rabies immune globulin, HRIG, and rabies vaccine given on the day of the rabies exposure and then a dose of vaccine given again on days 3, 7, and 14. For people who have never been vaccinated against rabies previously, post-exposure prophylaxis should always include administration of both the human rabies immunoglobulin and rabies vaccine. The combination of human rabies immunoglobulin and vaccine is recommended for both bite and non-bite exposure, regardless of the interval between exposure and initiation of treatment. If you have received rabies vaccination in the past, you typically need only two doses of rabies vaccine after an exposure. The dose of the human rabies immunoglobulin is 20 units per kg and should be infiltrated around the wound as much as possible and the remainder given intramuscularly. The rabies vaccine is 1 ml and should be administered in the deltoid. It should never be administered in the gluteal muscles. Immunocompromised patients need an additional dose of vaccine 
on day 28. People cannot transmit rabies to other people unless they themselves are sick with rabies. Post-exposure prophylaxis will protect you from developing rabies and therefore you cannot expose other people to rabies. You can continue to participate in your normal activities. Well, thanks much to the Center for Disease Control, the CDC. Thanks for watching. People don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I wish you well. Good night.